Hello, I'm Evelyn Risley with TechCrunch Now for Wednesday, July 21st. Facebook has officially crossed the 500 million members mark. Zuckerberg announced the milestone this morning on the company's blog, complete with user stories and thank you photos from employees. As of this morning, I'm happy to announce that 500 million of you all over the world are actively using Facebook to stay connected with your friends and the people around you. Half a billion is a nice number, but the number isn't what really matters here. What matters are all of the stories we hear from all of you about the impact your connections have had on your lives. And yet even as Facebook hurdles towards the 1 billion mark, which seems inevitable at this point, it just can't quite escape all that negative criticism. From its privacy brouhaha to this week's American Customer Satisfaction Index, which showed that Facebook had a pretty low rating of 64. That puts it on par with some cable providers and airlines. So what does Facebook do at this point, or does it even all matter? Well, here with some advice for Facebook is Mike Linton. He's the former CMO of eBay and Best Buy. Thanks for joining us in the studio. Thank you for having me. So Facebook just crossed the 500 million user mark. That's pretty enviable of a position for any company, but they're also often the target for a lot of negative criticism. So what do you think is wrong with Facebook when it comes to their PR message and that public perception? So first I have to say, I don't think there's that much wrong with Facebook. And I would love to have the problem of this kind of rapid growth. To me, this is a, if this is a problem, this is a very high grade problem. Now, there are other services on that survey that scored well, like Wikipedia and yeah. YouTube, they scored some of the highest of that right. group. Um, is it because their services are just more simple? I, I, I would say those are single focus mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. So YouTube is pure entertainment and I seek and I find. Facebook, there's an awful lot of stuff going on there. So it's, you know, you're talking to your friends, you're using all the technology. There's lots of things that can happen there, and so I'm not surprised that there are some issues with that from the users, but in the aggregate, I would say they're doing a really good job. Now, if you could put on your former CMO hat here, what yeah. would you do in Facebook's position when you have this growing base, but at the same time, you're dealing with reports that not everyone's satisfied? What would be your strategy if you were their CMO? I, I think they're doing the right stuff a lot. Mm -hmm. So. One, I think Facebook has done a very good job at projecting the fact that they are, you know, a people's network. You know, and you, you don't, the other thing, I hear people saying Facebook's a monopoly and everything, but you don't have to use Facebook. The people in the Consumer Report this week, they said that they felt compelled to use it because all their friends were on Facebook. Facebook is a voluntary thing. This is not like the credit card interchange fee where if I want to use my credit card, somebody has to collect that fee. I go to Facebook voluntarily, as do all my friends. If we are all encapsulated by some giant monopolistic force, I'm not sure what that is. Okay, so fair enough. Um, so Facebook is not a monopoly, right? But there is a lot of negative comments in the press and here and there. So how, if you're Facebook, how do you pick apart, you know, what they should listen to, what matters and what doesn't? So if it's me, I listen to my users. Mm -hmm. And I, I would be parsing this out in terms of who's using it, who's watching it, and who's making opinions on it. Mm -hmm. um, but I would concentrate most on the user. And all the brands I've worked on, there are multiple brand touch points all the way through to the call center if you're selling you know, manufactured goods or, or at eBay or Best Buy. You want to be watching that entire consumer experience and find out where the pain points are and then go about systemically reducing the pain points while you continue to improve the product benefit, whatever that is. When you started at Best Buy around 2000, um, the company was pulling in roughly $9 billion in revenue, it was a, right? It was a, it was a very, I started the first day of 99, okay. second day, really. So I, I roughly 99, yeah. 2000, around $9 billion revenues. It grew up to roughly $30 billion by the time you left, yeah. right? So tons of growth in there. What is the key when it comes to marketing during that fast growth period? Because I imagine Facebook is not done growing. I, I, doubt, I doubt they're <laughs> done growing. And I've been, in a, been fortunate to be in a couple of companies that have had rapid growth. I think that the thing you can't do is you can't sacrifice growth for product quality. There is always a bias to grow as fast as you possibly can. And I think you should do that, but not at the expense of product quality. Mm -hmm. Make sure that the product delivers to the user group and is evolving in a way the user group is happy. Yeah. Will they ever be content? No. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want them to be content? No, because it's the, it's the user input and your own people's innovation colliding that increases the power of your brand over time. So one piece of advice for Facebook, if you could boil down to one sentence perhaps. Oh, I think this is all about the users. 
Great. Well, thanks so much. Hopefully Zuckerberg is out there listening. <laughs> I, Let's see. I don't know that Facebook needs any help from me, but um, and I'm, Your I'm services obviously, are available I'm obviously a fan. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Once again, my guest has been Mike Linton, the former CMO of eBay and Best Buy.